Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a pair of Hot Wheels 1959 Cadillac Coupe de Ville's. I need two of them at least to go to work on this project. It's the Giga Horse from the Mad Max Fury Road film. I'm making my way through building all of the movie vehicles and it's time for the Giga Horse in the rotation. It's going to be a complicated build this time and I actually have a backup Cadillac because there's going to be a lot of cutting and molding together. I grabbed a couple of monster trucks as possibilities for the lift kit that I'm going to need underneath. I might or might not use these. This one actually has some built-in suspension. And the Giga Horse is powered by two Chevy 502 horsepower big block V8 crate motors. And these Roger Dodgers will serve as donors for the closest possible match that I can make. I'll be doing some 3D resin printing for these jumbo dualies on the back. It's going to be a fun one. Don't forget a thumbs up. Always helps us YouTube creators. And I want to draw your attention today to JDC, Jay's Diecast Creations, because the Giga Horse is also going to serve as my entry into Jay's Double Trouble build off. Jason and Amanda are expecting twin girls and he's invited his online community friends to celebrate that with something on the theme of double and I think the Giga Horse fits the bill. Watch and find out. I'm going to intersperse my video today with a couple of different clips from the Fury Road film production designer Colin Gibson talking about this beast. In a world where there's barely one of anything, to show you had power, he's the man who's got two of everything. That is... I wish I'd seen this movie on the big screen, but I never did. I bet the theater seats rumbled when any of the vehicles rolled across the screen. Well, the breakdown is the same as any other project and I am aided substantially by the plethora of information that's available online on the Giga Horse. And one plan in particular which was of great benefit to me was this blueprint right here which I printed in scale size and I used it for taking and making the various measurements that were required, including this, the very first cut on the bottom Coupe de Ville. I used my table vise for safety, and the jeweler saw I got a good workout during this whole one week long process. And here's the first matched up front grill assembly. The second cut is so that I can eventually elongate the chassis to fit the exaggerated engine bay. This was the most particular measuring, drawing, and cutting in the whole project. I'm happy that I was able to do it with just one of the Coupe de Ville's. The top one has to fit all of the side lines to fit on top of the bottom caddy. And then I had to cut it front to back, right down the middle, to make it a little bit narrower so the top caddy would fit inside the famous tail fins of the bottom one. And the JB Weld is going to get well used in this project too for some bodywork. I chose this monster truck ultimately because I never thought I'd work on a choo-choo train and I take off all of the external pieces because I want to get down to just the lift kit here that required physically cutting off the monster truck tires and I'll need to do some fabrication and mods on this to get the right rake that I want on the Giga Horse but I think I've got the basics of what I need to be successful here. More cutting and much more shaping is required. This really needed a whole lot of dry fits through the process. I did it all in a week, but 
I probably spent considerably extra time on this, as you can imagine, because of all of this bodywork fabrication that you're watching right now. A day or so has passed for the JB Weld to set up, and I use my rough files to smooth that down as best as I can. And you'll see the top one's a little bit narrower. It did take a lot of trial and error to get that just right. And now I'm going to use some glazing putty, the same that you use on your real car, to get a little bit finer finish on the top. But I'm not going for perfection in this build. I figure the Giga Horse has been well-traveled and looks pretty rough. The War Rig was the first of my personal Fury Road builds, and I'll leave a link so you can follow that after you finish with the Giga Horse. This video accounts for 10% of the total views on my YouTube channel. It's by far the most popular one, and I think if you like this, you're going to enjoy that one. So follow the link when you've got some time. Here's where the blueprint comes in especially handy for my scale measurements. And I'm always happy when a primer stage comes and everything starts to look like one piece. Another picture is going to help me with some of the concepts of the exaggerated rake that goes on here. So I'm using the lift kit from the train monster truck but I'm adding my own drivetrain to it because I had to cut that in half and extend it. And now I'm putting some extra struts on as well. This is two millimeter round styrene and I'll repeat that on the front just to beef it up a little bit. And it looks like this. Back into the spray booth for some primer on my DIY lift kit. Very happy with how that came out. Lots of dry fits along the way, and when that's all set up, more black base coat goes on. All right, there was lots of filing and sanding because of this cut down the middle, and it's already looking pretty rough, and I'll touch it up as I go. But again, we're not going for showroom Cadillac condition here. This one's been out in the wastelands for a long time, but now you get an impression of how it started to take shape. I've cut out some rams and blades out of flat styrene plastic. And I'm following some more pictures that I downloaded to give it that unmistakable front grill. Remember all the cutting of that bottom Cadillac that took place in the beginning? This is why. It's got a very highly extended engine bay that I need to reinforce, but that's exactly how the movie car looks. Now it's time for the two Roger Dodgers to give up their engines. Not exactly the same as the movie, but come on, you got to allow me some artistic license here. I use what I've got on hand. And whatever I don't use, I put back into the boneyard for future project consideration. I shaved a little bit off of the sides of each one of these so they would fit together in this way. Now I'm using some industrial staples from my heavy staple gun to fabricate the radiator. We needed double tyres at the back, obviously to give us that rakish angle of looking like you're moving even when you're parked. These are actually super industrial tractor wheels that we've doubled up. We had to make our own interior rims and hubs. The dualies are 70 inches high in real life. You see the height of a, a man. And so I took those measurements and scaled them down and punched it all into my 3D resin printer, as well as the fuel tanks and a couple of other cells that go on the side. And now you start to get the vision of the size, the scale, the shape, the rake of the Giga Horse. 
I did the Mac tow truck recently as well. Here's another link for you to follow in your leisure time. I hope you'll enjoy all of these. And I'll continue to do more of the Fury Road vehicles in the future. I've got a buzzard in my mind and the Doofmobile. It was a great movie for car enthusiasts and good fun for me as a hobbyist on my bench, trying my best to recreate them. I made my own axle tubes and fit them into the lift kit. Now I'm doing a little more work on the tail end of the upper caddy that I had to narrow, and so I had to cut this grill down and the tail lights. But I put them all back together and added another piece of styrene to fill some of the holes. Once the resin has set up, I give that a spritz in the spray booth as well. And to make my own axles, and I like to use a dollar store bead as a spacer here. This will also ensure that when I glue the axle into the wheel, it won't stick to the axle tube, because I want this to be free rolling. All the cars that go out of the shop here have to be rollers. That's just a personal rule of mine. Same procedure on the front. I think I did 20 millimeters in the front and 32 on the back, if I'm not mistaken, to get the same scale measurements as the film Giga Horse. It really does look menacing. It is way up in the air. It's approximately 4 meters high without the flags and weighs in at 10 and a half tons. Oh yeah. A pair of 502 big block motors. We're actually supercharging the pair. We have had it up to 125 k's. Wondering exactly how I was going to do all this piping and plumbing on the engine bay, I decided to go with this craft store, very soft metal. I got it in a few different thicknesses and colors, doing my best to approximate the film Giga Horse, going by the photo set up yet. I think it looks terrific, and I'm not done with the front end yet. Exhausts, we doubled up, two on either side. These are uh, handmade. Beaten into it is the Immortan symbol, the screaming skull. The next challenge in the build was what to use to make these exhaust extensions. If you've got fine detail brushes in this hobby, they are covered with a little plastic tube. And I thought that's perfect for what I need right here. So I took four of them, painted them up. Notice I've wrapped some tape around the end, exactly as you see in the movie. And you can also watch the Elvis from a 32 Ford Coupe that I made most recently. Follow these links and have yourself a good old Fury Road time watching my videos. Here's the last bit of plumbing that I put into the front engine bay. And one more time, I went for some staples. These are not the heavy staple gun from the shop, but my office desk stapler, little different scale size, and it fills in the bit of gap and the loose ends that I wanted to cover up. If you remember, this also comes from the train monster truck. These were just the skeleton pieces that I'm going to clip apart because all I want is the suspension. It's not anything like a working model, it's just for looks. I give them a shot of primer and then I'll use a fine brush and some X7 paint. It'll be pretty well tucked away under there, but for those looking closely, it's going to be a nice little addition. We're getting close to the end. 
So the last few add-ons and accoutrements include a red flag and a black flag off the back of the top caddy. I'm not sure of the significance of the colors of these. If you happen to know, write it down in the comments below. And trying to follow all the smallest details I can, I've got a caddy emblem on the front and the Immortan Joe symbols from the movie underneath the bottom deck of the top caddy. Out come the weathering powders for the very last application in any job. Remember, it's been out in the wastelands coughing up a dust cloud for its entire life. And so, again, we're not going for showroom condition. We're going for well-worn and used. Not rusty, but dusty. I mocked up a couple of my own guns for the back out of some various pieces of styrene tubes. This is where the war boys take up their position for some rear firepower. The finishing touches is the application of the flags. I uh, spent a whole week-long project and a whole lot more time in advance than that just thinking of it and writing down some notes. But with that final spin and a little bit of black wash to go on the faux suspension and also on the engine bay because nothing is shiny and clean on the Fury Road and a little bit on the tape just to highlight the creases we're ready for a closer look. I'm absolutely happy with the final result. And as I turn it around in my hands, you can see all of the detail that I put into it. Cutting those caddies to shape. I even put the Immortan Joe teeth on the tailgate of the lower caddy. <laughs> Just like the movie. I love the big tractor tires that I've printed. They came out so well. There's my added struts and suspension on the bottom. I have to say I'm most pleased with the engine detail and the piping and plumbing. And a special touch at the very end on the theme of Double Trouble, the names of the two drivers. Off they go on the next adventure. Look pretty new in the beginning. There's the caddies and the Roger Dodgers and well I had a great time putting this all together. Here it is. Double caddies, double exhaust, double engines, double tractor tires, double guns, double flags. That spells double trouble to me. Congratulations, Jason and Amanda, on the soon-to-be-here twin girls. God bless you and your little growing family. I hope you enjoyed this Giga Horse build done just for you, and that everyone did as well. Remember, I've got other Fury Road vehicles already uploaded on my channel, and I promise more to come. Thanks for visiting today. I wish you all a lovely week. Drive carefully. It's coffee time.